So good morning again, everyone that's here this morning for morning prayer. And uh, greetings to all of you who are uh, watching this at a different time and place. And this is the School of Christian Mysticism. And we're continuing our exploration of Teresa of Avila's uh, great um, work, The Interior Castle. And uh, we are continuing to use um, Mirror by Stars version, which mine is a bit um, dog eared. Uh, but uh, you don't necessarily need to get that one, but uh, it's, um, it's a really beautiful version. So we've come to uh, the third dwelling of the seven dwellings of the castle. And uh, we're having three meditations on each dwelling. So this is the first meditation on this third dwelling. So let's uh, enter into the meditation now. And let's offer this meditation for the the benefit of all beings and in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to share some uh, quotes from uh, Teresa's account of this third dwelling. And uh, when we're talking about dwelling, it's a very dualistic uh, way of thinking about it, really. Um, but we're talking perhaps about a, a condition of our self, a condition of being. And... Uh, condition of our being changes over time and changes within a day. The state of our consciousness is another way that we could think about it. So I'll be um, giving some uh, quotes from uh, Teresa's commentary about this uh, third dwelling of the interior castle and um, and uh, also uh, bringing some uh, uh, thoughts uh, and cross-references uh, a little bit to uh, the uh, some Sufi thinking or Sufi language, let's say, for the same thing. So we've... Uh, We've traveled through in our exploration and within ourselves the first dwelling and uh, the second dwelling. And the uh, one of uh, Cynthia Bourgeau's uh, students, Matthew Wright, uh, uh, a fellow American, who's 
an Episcopal priest and a Sufi, like Cynthia Bourgeau, part of that same um, Mevlani order, refers to the, the, the first dwelling um, as uh, you're a jerk, rather American slang, you're a jerk. And to the second dwelling as uh, you know you're a jerk. You know you're a jerk, which is a rather painful place to be. But uh, when we come up to this, as it were, we'll go into this third dwelling, we come to a critical turning point. And I'm, I'm no longer quoting Matthew right now. We come to a critical turning point. We're still within the realm of the strength of the ego, but the, uh, the ego has become clearer and allows more of the, of the light of the divine to penetrate into the consciousness. And uh, Teresa uh, describes uh, this state of being like this. Oh, blessed are those that are in awe of God. What else can one say of one who has persevered, has transcended all those conflicts and entered safely into the third dwelling, the conflicts being those of the joke? Of course, such a one is blessed until she turns, unless she turns back, she is on the straight path to liberation. So she says, souls that are in this state of consciousness are reluctant to offend his majesty, that they carefully avoid even petty imperfections. They use their time wisely, spending long hours in meditation, they practice acts of compassion towards their neighbor. Balanced they are in speech and appearance. And if they have a household, they manage it harmoniously. Whoever would suggest, she says, that these souls having endured such strife to arrive at this place are not motivated by a one-pointed desire for goodness. No one. But words are not enough. We need more than speech if the beloved is to take full possession of our souls. So the ego, what she's saying here is that the, the ego is still a, a problem. And when, when it's difficult to distinguish when we're in this state of what is ego and what is, what is divine experience. In the Sufi tradition, this is known as the inspired self. That is, we're, we're inspired with our practice, we're inspired with our life in God. But uh, we're not able easily to distinguish what is prompting us yeah, to um, act and to be. We're not quite sure whether it's God or our ego self, or we think it's God, but it's actually our own will. So this is a, a critical turning point. And on this day, which is the 12th of August, 2024, uh, we've just seen the, the ending of the uh, Olympics with uh, all the um, 
extraordinary uh, endeavor and the human beings in a certain way at the, at the peak of their capacity and uh, united in their efforts to um, uh, to uh, to race in various ways the whole world coming together in peace and harmony uh, although in competition and at the same time we see the world the state of the world and brutal conflict and the the uh, the savagery which uh, is uh, it's possible for a human being to 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 visit on another human being you know, collectively and so our endeavor in mystical practice mystical evolution is um, quite 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 crucial Teresa says that the most important thing is to surrender. We can't distinguish between our will and the will of God very easily, or, or at least often we get it wrong. So we need to have a, a, an attitude of not me, but thou, not my will, but thy will be done. And um, I'm rather glad that I'm the first uh, doing the first meditation of uh, this um, dwelling, and glad that uh, Malcolm and Tim will be um, taking over um, um, in 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 time, because uh, there's so much I think that one could say about this. But just a few things that she says about uh, surrender. In other words, we she says we need to have an attitude of humility. You should be content, she says, to simply be God's servants. Look at those holy ones who have successfully entered the chamber of God, and you will see the difference between them and us. Don't ask for what you haven't earned. No matter how much we have served God, we have also let him down. Abandon yourselves only under the condition that you harbor no illusions about the beloved being under some obligation to repay you for your sacrifice with divine favors. During all the time he walked this world, he did nothing but serve. Do we have to keep asking him for more gifts, more favors? Where there is humility, God will grant the peace that comes from being aligned with his will. Let us abandon our reason and fear into his hands. Forget about the weakness in our nature that we worry about so much. So in the second dwelling, in Sufi terms, this is called the regretful self. And uh, Regret doesn't change anything. It just makes us feel bad. But here we have a, a real possibility of seeing what we're doing uh, that is uh, not aligned with the will of God and and engaging in, in true repentance, which means that we're in a position to put wrongs right and to be conscious enough not to do the same thing again. So don't dwell in your in your mistakes, she says. Notice them, do something about it.
And ideally, she says, take a spiritual guide so that you can submit your will to someone else, so that you can check what you think is God's will uh, with someone else in a reflective process of uh, spiritual uh, guidance. In this, uh, in her commentary on the third dwelling, Teresa comments about uh, Mary, the mother, and how privileged we are to have as our advocate and example uh, the person, the being of, of Mary. And uh, so I'd like to share a practice today of... Uh, what's called the Angelus, which uh, many of us will know already. And I'm going to put this on the screen and then talk a little bit about it, and then we'll spend, I would suggest, the rest of our time in this practice. So the uh, the Angelus, the angel, um, uh, as uh, many of us remember, is, uh, takes as its um, central story uh, the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel announcing that she will conceive Jesus. Um, and uh, that encounter. And uh, it's uh, really nice. I, I understand that uh, the, the Christian David Stendhal Brass uh, comments about uh, how this uh, practice arose. And uh, uh, because normally it's said at dawn and at noon and uh, at uh, six o'clock in the evening, that the evening one, for example, is uh, was um, started when the f uh, when a bell was rung uh, for uh, during the Crusades for the crus Crusaders to douse the fires to put the fires out, and curfew means to cover the fire. I gather, and so here we're covering fire, we're putting the fires of the ego out and submitting to something higher, submitting our will to something much higher. And we're doing this as Mary did it. So um, the practice takes up the conversation um, between the angel and Mary. And uh, so I can't ring a bell because I, I think it might come out as rather distorted. Um, uh, but um, but I, I will intone uh, uh, the word sanctus. And um, I'm just realizing what I need to do is... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop sharing. Mm, good one. So I will intone the word sanctus, which means holy, of course. 
Uh, and then in ordinary type, um, I say the angel of the Lord declared to Mary, this is the encounter. And you say, and I'll say it with you, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. And then we say the Hail Mary. And really this is like uh, saying, hello, Mary. Uh, and greeting her for all her beautiful qualities. And um, I don't think for those of us sitting here today, this is um, quite so much of a problem. But for some of us, uh, the word sinners uh, um, that can be um, a problem and has been perhaps misused uh, a, a bit over Christian history. And uh, for sinners, we might uh, um, say those of us that are missing the mark at this moment, or generally speaking, that when we're in an egoic state, and we're not aligned, um, we're praying here that we become aligned uh, with the Holy One, aligned with the will of God. So that's the first, Santos, 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 and then I say, you say, and we say together the Hail Mary. And then we uh, go more deeply, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And uh, then the Hail Mary again, and then the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So um, let's uh, address here the, the Mary within us, which is able to incarnate the Christ. And then the last prayers that we uh, say together. I say this first invitation and then we say together. So I hope that's uh, clear enough. I don't want to just spend too long in explanation. And we'll just take our time going through this. So let's first of all make a, a dedication of perhaps wanting to align ourselves with the will of God and to submit our will to God's will with the help of Mary. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and together, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. And we'll take a pause here. And the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now 
and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Together be it done unto me according to thy word. The Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and together and dwelt among us. And the Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
this final part and uh, if you're not already you might like to join in the chant of the sanctus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray together. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel. May, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's let that just go into the silence and descend deeply within us.
Amen.